Welcome, vibrant viewers, to today's episode of Healthy Living. Dr. T. Colin Campbell, Ph.D., is a professor emeritus of nutritional biochemistry at Cornell University, USA. For more than 40 years, Dr. Campbell has been at the forefront of nutrition research. Dr. Campbell is the project director of the China Oxford Cornell Diet and Health Project, which eventually became known as the China Study considered the most comprehensive analysis of the role of diet, disease, and health ever conducted. In 2004, Dr. Campbell and his son Tom co-authored the book The China Study, which summarizes his research in nutrition and concludes that a pure, vegan, meaning animal-free diet, is optimal for human health. Dr. Campbell continues to actively participate in the development of national and international nutrition policies. Dr. Campbell was invited in July 2009 to share his work and life-changing messages with audiences in Singapore. While he was in Asia, Supreme Master Television had the good fortune of speaking with Dr. Campbell about the vegan diet, health and climate change. First, many of us have been told that milk and dairy products are good sources of protein. Is this really true? Let's hear from Dr. Campbell, who worked on a dairy farm when he was young. You know, we are. We're the only species on the face of the planet that continues to consume milk beyond the so-called winning period. The indigestible protein in cow's milk actually causes a negative chain reaction in the bodies of infants, children and adults. Uh, because the protein in reality stimulates the growth of cells and the growth of the body and the growth of cancer cells, you know, faster, let's say, than other proteins. Animal proteins tend to do that. And the, so it's the protein of the milk. They seem to cause so many problems. Protein also does some other things too. When, for example, it's not completely digested down to its constituent amino acids, and, and maybe there's little little uh, chains of amino acids that will remain undigested. We call them peptides. Those things get absorbed in the blood, especially in the infant. And they look like foreign proteins, which they are. And so our bodies produce antibodies against them, which are very specific for just those that string of amino acids. And then those antibodies turn around and find the same string of amino acids in the cells of the pancreas that's responsible for producing insulin. So the antibodies being produced against this foreign protein in turn turn against you know, a, a similar secret amino acid in the pancreas and therefore destroy it. And, it, and that leads to type 1 diabetes. Dr. Campbell advises on the best way to provide nutrition to precious infants. The best advice of all is for the mother to continue nursing for at least one year, maybe even as much as two years, but at least one year. Uh, that's the natural order of things. And, and then if a woman cannot nurse or not nurse long enough, a plant protein based powder is probably okay. It's not as good as mother's milk, of course. We have to understand that. And as soon as the baby can get onto water as a source of hydration, they should do that. In a previous interview with Supreme Master Television, Dr. Campbell explained that at least 50% of the greenhouse gases emitted into the atmosphere are a result of the livestock production process. In other words, meat consumption is driving climate change. Here is an update from Dr. Campbell on an issue that concerns the very survival of our planet. Although yet it's uh, unofficial, there are a couple of individuals, very significant people, who have been making this report and looking very carefully at the numbers. And um, their conclusion now is that the contribution of livestock production to global warming is more than 60 percent. It's not the 18 percent which was first suggested three or four years ago. It's not even the 50-some percent was suggested a short while ago. I find this estimate to be staggering. And obviously it's not known by almost anyone. It's been accepted for publication in a professional journal. It's going to appear in October. What 
are the implications of this critically important finding? They've made quite a convincing case. I mean, the implications of that are, are enormous. Mm -hmm. And it's enormous in the context of a couple of points. One is that the principal contribution to the global warming from livestock is methane rather than CO2, carbon dioxide. And that's important because methane has about 25 times the capacity on a molecular basis of absorbing energy. So it's much more tenacious with respect to its activity that way. Um, secondly, and this is probably even more important, the half-life of methane once it goes up in the atmosphere is only about eight or nine years, so I'm told, whereas carbon dioxide is maybe 75 to 100. So what this means is that methane's up there now. If we stop producing methane, it'll begin to decline much faster in a reasonable period of time. Whereas even if we reduce CO2 production by 20%, which is about the highest we can get the politician to agree to, that's not going to make any difference at all, really, for two or three generations, if then. So uh, that's why this message is so, so important. What do we choose to eat? It's, it's maybe the most important of all. We will pause now for some brief messages. When Healthy Living returns, we will have more of our engaging interview with Dr. T. Colin Campbell. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. <laughs> 